Today on Cruise Man's Garage, we're installing an XM radio antenna onto this 2018 Honda Goldwing Tour. It's the same installation for any 2018 Honda Goldwing. A link to the PDF file with the Honda installation instructions is included in the description of this video. Raise your windshield all the way to the top and hold the switch in while turning the ignition off. That will lock the windshield in the up position. It's always a good idea to clean the windshield before removing it. To remove the body clip from the back of the windscreen mount, press in the center of the clip with a sharp object like a screwdriver or a pick, and then use your fingernail or a small pry bar to remove the clip. And You'll be working with a lot of these during this installation, so I just want you to know how they work. Uh, basically, this is what it will look like when you remove it. You can see the center section. I don't know if you can see it, but the center section is pushed in. To reset this, you just push up from the bottom, and that pops that little center piece out. Now it has been reset, and when you reinstall it, you'll push it in, push this little center section down, and that will hold it into place. Remove the windshield covers by sliding them down and pulling them out. Remove the four 5mm Allen screws that hold the windshield in place. Make sure when you remove these screws that the washers uh, remain on the screw. Carefully remove the windscreen and set it aside where it won't get damaged. Remove the rubber washers from the mounting posts and set them aside. It's a good idea to keep all the related parts together. Next, remove the 5mm bolts that hold the windshield stays in place. When removing the windshield stay, be careful there is a nut underneath and you don't want that to fall out somewhere and scratch your paint. If you have upper air deflectors installed, you'll need to remove them. Remove the two 5mm bolts that hold the upper air deflectors in place. Remove the upper air deflector with the collars attached and set them aside. Remove the 5mm Allen screw that holds the arm panel in place. Then remove the plastic arm panel. The rear view mirrors are held in place with two 8mm hex bolts. Remove these using a ratchet and a socket. As you remove the second bolt, make sure you're holding the mirror firmly so it doesn't fall and damage your paint. There is a wire connected for the turn signal, and you can pull that out from the fairing. You'll see the rubber boot. But you can pull this little rubber boot. You see this boot? You can just pull it back kind of inside the front of the fairing. And here you can see the connector. And if I pull up on it, it should disconnect or release. So let's try that. It's a little tricky because you have to hold the mirror with one hand. There we go. Part of that connector, you see this little, this little tab right there. If you lift up on that, and it's, it's, fortunately it's a very weak tab. It's not very strong, so it doesn't take much. The deflector panel, shown here, is held in place with two 5mm screws. 
and a series of clips along the edge of the panel, both on the inside and the outside edge. Okay, there's a screw here, and there's one up here. Once you've removed the two 5mm screws that hold the deflector in place, you can begin to release the clips. I like to start at the bottom, and if you just pull on this black plastic, it's rather flimsy and malleable. You can, you can sort of remove these clips, and you'll hear some noise when you're doing it. Don't be concerned. That's just normal. You can see the clips here. If you look at the bottom of the deflector, you'll see this post, and that fits into a, an opening on the shelter. That's why I like to start at the bottom and release that first. Now, you're going to do this on both sides of the bike, and you also want to, once you're finished, release this body clip uh, from the shelter. Okay, to remove this inner cowl, I want to show you where it is. If you're looking at the front of the bike, I'm looking, I'm on the actual, on the right side of the bike. You can see here, it's this plastic piece, and it runs all the way, and then it actually runs up here, um, up a little higher, so it's all one piece. And it's held in place with two screws and uh, six clips, I believe. So there's one screw here and one screw here. These are five millimeter Allen screws. And then we have a body clip here, a body clip here, a body clip here. There's three there. And then it's hard for me to get this camera back there and the light and everything, but there's, there's one right back here and then there are two up here. Can you see those? Up there and up there. And the top one is actually easier to get out from above the bike looking down next to the handlebars. This one, the bottom one, you can get out from here. But the top one is easier to get out from above. Just go down through the uh, tunnel next to the handlebars and you'll be able to get that clip out. So I'm going to remove this and then we'll take a look at it once we get it out. The middle cowl comes off in one piece, along with the radiator grill intact. There are three plastic pins on the underside of the cowl that fit into grommets. There are also a series of plastic clips that snap into place to hold the cowl. In addition, there are two 5mm Allen screws that also hold the cowl in place. The lower one has already been removed when we removed the inner cowl. Remove the 5mm screw at the top of the middle cowl. On the inside of the middle cowl, just in front of the radiator, you'll find another body clip that must also be removed. If you look at the back side of the cowl, you can see the pins that are used to fit into the grommets on the bike. And these will be removed first. You can also see the series of plastic clips along the edge that hold the upper part of the cowl into place. Here you can see the location of the two body clips that hold the middle cowl into place. And here are the two mounting points for the two 5mm screws that hold the middle cowl. It's important to take note of this positioning pin at the very front of the cowl on the pointed part, and that fits into a hole on the front of the bike just underneath the headlight. And that's why we start removing this cowl from the back, not from the front. You don't want to break that pin or that hole. I like to start by releasing the grommet at the bottom, at the bottom of the radiator grill, and then start working those grommets out at the back pointed end of the shelter as I'm doing here. And then you'll start pulling those clips loose and trust me, it will be loud when they come loose. Remove the body clips at the top corners of the garnish. 
Next, remove the 5mm Allen screws on each side of the garnish. Keep all the parts organized as you remove each piece. After you've released the left and right edge of the garnish, you can then pull on the center of the section to release the three pins that fit into grommets. With the garnish removed, now you can see those three pins that fit into the grommets. You will also notice a series of plastic clips that are also used to hold the garnish in place. Remove the two Phillips screws and the washers that hold the two inner wind flaps in place. Do this on both sides. With the screws removed, you can then remove the wind flaps. Remove the body clips on each side of the meter visor as shown. Remove the two 5mm Allen screws that hold the meter visor in place and then you can begin working the meter visor loose and remove it. The first step is to install the two clip nuts over the posts shown here. Using the screws included in your kit, mount the XM antenna over those clip nuts. Refer to the printed PDF file to route the wire and the connector through the shelter. When routed correctly, the connector will come out on the left side of the bike, as shown. Okay, next we have to remove this piece right here. And to do that, first we have to remove the parking brake handle. And then there's some screws and clips. I'll show you how to get that out. There are two small 4mm Allen screws that hold the parking brake in place. Remove the lower one first, then raise the parking brake handle and remove the upper one. With both screws removed, you can easily remove the handle. Remove the 5mm screw at the rear of the deflector. Remove the body clip that's located on the inside of the deflector that mounts into the top shelter. Remove the 5mm screw at the top front edge of the deflector. Another screw is located on the top edge toward the center of the deflector as shown here. Okay, there's the last screw back there. I'm not sure if you can see it, but the parking brake is just above it. It's kind of way back in the very back. Remove the two screws at the back of the top shelter. Then, remove the 5mm screw and collar from the front of the top shelter. Now you can begin working the deflector loose by releasing the clips along the top edge of the deflector and the shelter. Open both saddlebag doors and remove both of the side cover panels. Disconnect the heated seat connector on the right side of the motorcycle in front of the saddlebag. Remove the 6mm Allen bolts and washers on each side of the seat at the very front.
Masking tape can be used to prevent paint damage during seat removal. You begin by releasing the two nylon pins at the front of the seat. Pull up firmly on both sides at the same time. Then, begin working the seat forward and up, making sure that the connector is free. The radio unit is located under the seat toward the back. Locate the dummy plug for the XM radio and remove it. Route the XM radio subcord provided in the kit as shown and per the instructions. It will run along the left side of the gas tank. You can also connect the subcord to the main cord. Route the subcord along the frame and underneath any frame rails to the radio area. I like to use a hemostat to help pull the wire through tight places if necessary, and then you can connect it to the radio as shown. Cut the cushion provided into three sections and apply it uh, to the side of the gas tank to hold the subcord wire in place. Use the provided cable ties to secure the cable along the route. When you select SXM as your audio source, you'll see a toll-free number to call for XM service. You'll be required to give your radio ID, and by selecting a different channel, you should be able to find your radio ID.